Our story is one of reimagining. Reimagining who you can be, what you can achieve, and how SEMA can support you. As technology and digital platforms disrupt businesses, we are reimagining what the profession can be. We've updated our syllabus to meet the expectation of employers, ensuring SEMA qualified professionals have the skills to make an impact from day one. Reimagine your career. Contact SEMA Sri Lanka. Welcome to LMD TV. This week on Talking Business, Anushan Sarvaraja speaks with Diane Gomez. Welcome to LMD TV, Diane. Good to have you with us. Great to be with you all. Now, Diane, leaving out the economic part of it, what is your assessment of the state of the nation? Um, at the moment, the country is uh, going through a bit of a stagnation process. That's basically uh, due to COVID-19 uh, issue because there's a little bit of uncertainty, uncertainty at the moment um, with, uh, with people in the country. And I don't blame. It's, it's, a all, it's all over the world. So I think the next six months will definitely see an improvement where people will get back to normal life. And uh, there's the possibility of the vaccine as well that will completely uh, change the mindset of the people. So till then, I think this stagnation process will go on for the next couple of months. But government is doing their best to attack it. I mean, there are too many balls to juggle, but uh, I think they are doing a decent job. Um, then, then let, now let's bring in the economic side of it. How, uh, how is the country doing on an economic standpoint? Mm. At the moment, I would say it's doing fairly all right for two reasons. One is our exports haven't got affected uh, like the way that I myself uh, thought that it might uh, be really uh, a drastic impact on the uh, exports. But apparel has been able to keep the momentum going, although some of the quarters haven't been great. They are still running the, the, running the ship quite very well. So in turbulent waters. So I think um, a lot of credit for the large uh, apparel giants. They have been managing the situation pretty well. Then regarding all the other exports, uh, they are still growing. It's not a minus growth. So it's a, it's a positive aspect. Then our imports have been cut down drastically, which has got that balance which the government needed at this time. Of course, it has had some impacts on the local consumers, then the small industrialists, etc. Uh, but I think they have managed the situation in the most pragmatic way. Now, you've been uh, appointed to the executive board of the AIBA, the International Boxing Federation. Uh, what does your role entail? I think the, my role is more on a policy level job where we are looking at uh, we have said uh, the IBA world body had an uh, issue with the uh, Olympic Committee, that's the, the IOC. Uh, they had requested certain uh, uh, changes to our constitution and the transparency. So the new body, uh, which is having the first executive meeting after the new president got appointed last week, uh, will look at some of those issues very critically. And I'm going to be part of that committee, which is looking at the transparency uh, and the financial uh, uh, due diligence uh, of what's been done by the ABA, uh, IBA, and of course, how we are going to take it forward. So coming from that finance background, and I served in some of the other commissions, my role will be more on a policy level. Getting back to the country, Diane, now uh, the business community has hailed the appointment of private sector leaders through the Public Services Commission. Uh, I mean, they've been waiting for this for quite some time. But can the citizens expect a vast improvement in the service that is given by the public sector to the people of this country? I think the idea of appointing private sector people into very senior public service appointment by the president um, is to get the private sector thinking into the public service. Because when I look at, you know, we have had only two sittings, there's a vast knowledge and a structured uh, uh, organization uh, in the public service. 
I think sometimes it comes as a quite a surprise for people who are very biased about private sector that private sector is very efficient and uh, very very uh, aggressive. But I think public sector, given the right environment, will be much better than even the private sector, because the public sector bureaucrats uh, seems to understand exactly how it runs and what are the implications of all the decisions. They are pretty good at it. Their knowledge base is far more stronger than even the private sector executive, because most of them who are holding positions are very well educated. They might not have the fan and fair. You know, let's face it. Uh, they might not have the dog and pony shows. So um, horse and pony, you know, all these kind of flamboyant stuff. But they understand. But what we really need to do is how technology can improve the services. How we can make them much more accountable and strong without political interference to manage their job, jobs. So you can't expect results overnight. But we will look at and give our private sector thinking also uh, into the Public Service Commission. But they exactly know what they are doing. And the people who are appointed are very, very respected senior civil servants who have been operating in the, in the government. So I'm sure uh, we will push a lot of issues uh, much faster. That's the whole idea of it, giving a better service uh, to all those, uh, uh, all the issues that we are facing. We're going for a short break now. Welcome back to the show as we continue our discussion with Diane Gomez. Diane, uh, picking up from where we left off, does the Public Services Commission have a mandate to address corruption and mismanagement? Uh, not at the moment, because there's a separate commission for bribery and corruption. Uh, PSC will look at more uh, the structural appointments, the grievances, and, and other administrative issues. Yeah, so you said grievances as well. Now, are, there, are new do new mechanisms need to be brought in to address uh, grievances and uh, it public? Might, it, might be, uh, it might be, sorry, it might be a bit too early for that. Because on, on, on the way, I'm sure that we will suggest and we will try to make the improvements uh, to the commission. How do you view the calls for the listing of uh, state-owned enterprises? I think coming from the coming from the private sector, my my thinking will be very biased. Uh, all companies must make profits. They can't be black holes where the economy suffers be, uh, because of the inefficiencies of these organizations. But the whole idea of the president to put some robust individuals into those uh, ailing uh, organizations is to first recover and see whether they can be run profitably. I think if you do a restructure of all these organizations, uh, they will be profitable themselves. So you don't need to kind of privatize them. But there might be options where if you list it, there will be a mechanism where uh, there will be certain transparencies, more uh, efficient management, recruiting of better talent uh, and looking at the future rather than to just uh, sail your own ship. What practical steps can citizens take to better engage uh, with the various commissions? I think there's a mechanism for that, for the public to kind of uh, uh, approach the commissions. Some come through their ministries, some come through their so, because since it's the apex body of the public service, um, I think uh, there will be few interactions with the public directly. Diane, in your opinion, what further steps should be taken um, to safeguard jobs and uh, subsidize people who have lost their, their modes of income? Um, is that 5,000 rupee handout enough? At this particular moment, I think giving even 5,000 is a huge drain 
for the government. Uh, we all understand the cash flows and we all understand businesses. Uh, you can't dole out anything free these days, but the government has been doing it because the people are really suffering and they understand that because, uh, you know, there'll be otherwise kind of mass riots if there's food shortages, etc. But we also need to understand that we need to restructure uh, and make all our public service and the public organizations much more accountable in terms of their future liability, uh, future existence. Because we can't, or the government cannot keep on pumping in money for ailing industries and to do that. At this particular moment, they are doing their best. Now, the, the, the industries which are really affected are the tourism industry. Now, tourism industry also consists of the large hotels, the mid-sized villa type of people, and other people who are associated with them, like the travel agents, like the, the, the vehicle fleets that which are being running around, uh, then other ancillary services. Now, uh, I think the tourist board, the hotels associations have made some proposals to the government. Government is also looking at how to manage it. You know, they are finding it difficult to give uh, other than loans, which they have been, uh, which they have advised the banks to give. Maybe they might have to help with freezing of the interest because it's interest on interest. Things like that government will have to help. And I think the industry is also making a case uh, to the government and the relevant ministers to help them out with that. Because what I see in this government, uh, it's much more proactive and they tend to make the decisions because president uh, is very task oriented and believes in uh, delivery of results. And that's one of the things that uh, I see very clearly between uh, the last government and this government. They, they take the decisions and they try to execute it. Sometimes it's very difficult to execute in this democratic uh, environment. You know, if it was like something like China, once a decision is being taken, it can get executed very fast. And I mean, I don't have uh, understand of the Chinese political system, but I was at the Olympic Games in uh, 2008 uh, as a shifty mission for our Olympic team. And I've seen how efficient and how they execute it. They have the policy. Once it is done, they'll get it executed. And sometimes it can be very brutal as well. So, but we are in a democratic society. So obviously, uh, government can't be that brutal. But they take the calls to activate and execute the decisions. Right. But then, uh, Dan, also, then the government, yes, may want to be working. But in terms of the public sector also, do the people want to work? Do the people want to start making that change? That is key. If they don't, it's nothing's going to work. Actually, whether it's private sector or public sector, uh, people are people. You know, I always believe in that. Uh, creating the right environment, right uh, training, and right leadership will drive an organization or a country. So it does not happen overnight. I mean, I had 30 years in the corporate sector running more apparel plants. Uh, people always started saying, no, you can't do it. First thing is you create a culture. You have you create a culture of positive environment that as Sri Lankans, we can do it. Now that's my personal experiences, whether it's sports, whether it's public sector or the private sector, you need to create an environment. You have to believe in people that they can do it. Of course, Sri Lankans not if you don't drive them, if you don't put key performance indicators, and if you are not driving productivity, they'll come to work and go back in the evening, whether it's private sector, or public sector, people are people. So what you really need to drive is put some key performance indicators at a very senior level, uh, you know, initially, and drive those initiatives, drive those, uh, check those performance indicators. And of course, there will be fallouts. You know, there will be, uh, the, it, it will be more on meritocracy that how they will be taken care of. So I think we need to drive a company, public service, 
end the country in the same manner and to do that there will be a lot of resistance because simply a lot of people don't want to work they simply want to get a free dole out so in a thinking which has been polit politicized a society which has been politicized uh, when you try to do uh, things there's huge resistance and huge mudslinging so uh, in a public service people are a little bit more careful than in the private sector as a final question then um, what is your wish list we are going into a new year now what is your wish list for the new year i always believe that sri lankans and sri lanka are a nation of resilient people we have gone through a 30 year war we have gone through a tsunami now we are going through a covid we are going to come out of it the private sector public sector sports and the rest of the people we have a great leader who will try to execute things he's tough and he's transparent and he will drive this country we also have bad eggs we also have corruption we as a nation need to get rid of all those bad eggs in every sphere and drive this country so that my daughters and your sons and all of us have a great future not only next year and the years to come that is my wish and i believe in it well that was quite enlightening thank you so much for joining us on the show dan it was a great pleasure having you thank you very much after a short break ashwini vedakan will take you through a round up of local news stay tuned Welcome back to the show. I'm Ashwini Vedakan and here's a roundup of local news. As of this week, the total number of COVID-19 infected patients stands at 38,059, with the number of recoveries being 29,882, and the number of deaths now stand at 183. Visitors to New Delhi will now require a clearance certificate from their respective local public health inspectors. The mayor of Norelia stated that extra precautions are being taken to prevent the spread of the coronavirus in Norelia. He added that all hotels and rest houses in Norelia have been informed not to accommodate guests from outside the district unless they submit to a clearance certificate from their local PHI. Meanwhile, rapid antigen tests are being conducted on passengers crossing the border of the Western Province until further notice. Targeting travelers who are leaving the province during the festive season. The process will be facilitated by the police. In addition, respective regional directors of health services have been asked to deploy their teams to the selected locations to carry out the tests. On a more positive note, the government has begun talks with the World Bank to obtain a soft loan worth 10 billion rupees to purchase vaccines for the virus. It is also looking at the possibility of obtaining funds from the Asian Development Bank and the European Union for this purpose. with three technical subcommittees looking into various aspects of the covid-19 vaccine including its storage and prioritization of target groups to receive the jab the water supply in many parts of colombo was suspended earlier this week according to the national water supply and drainage board this was due to improvement work on the distribution pipeline of the greater colombo water supply improvement project and repair work on a transmission leak in angoda Meanwhile, last weekend's Fitch ratings report cited sluggish economic activity, external and domestic vulnerabilities, muted private credit growth, and the sovereign's weakened credit profile as significant downside risks to the operating environment of Sri Lankan banks. Fitch expects Sri Lanka's real GDP to expand by 4.9% in 2021, although off a lower base. following a contraction of 6.7% in 2020 however these forecasts are subject to a high degree of uncertainty regarding the evolution of the pandemic globally and in sri lanka and finally in sports sri lankan cricket team may face south africa without any practice for the upcoming fixture with the only practice match scheduled ahead of the test series being postponed according to sources the match has been postponed due to an issue with quarantine regulations Sri Lankan cricketers are yet to start practicing in South Africa and have been confined to their hotel premises. 
That's all we have for you this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We'd like to take this opportunity to also wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching and stay safe.